<clears throat> pardon me, it's kind of nice easing back into the video flow. It's very much like a trained muscle, like working out after you do 20 or 30 push-ups in the morning, like three or four days in a row. Uh, it, it becomes way easier. And the words start to flow more. The more you do it, the more they flow. And the less you have to worry about, do I have an image on screen? Did I paste the link to that? Like, you don't always have to be so... It helps if you get all the links in order and everything's right. But you don't have to be. You can just make a video and get online. You know, say, say what you think. Get it out there. Good God, what anything we need right now is our own, each other's vibrations. Make a vibration so that it can heal me or alter me. Enough with the text. Enough with the scribbles. Let's move together. Uh, I, I am like fascinated with the left-right paradigm. So you're familiar with liberal and conservative, and they're not mutually exclusive. You can be liberally conservative. Um, I have liberal views and conservative views. Conservation is conservative. You know, I go to the library. That's just kidding. That's not liberal. It's different. different word. Um, liberal, I think the word liberal and its modern incarnation comes from what we call the liberal economic order. And it was this like concept, talk about this before, this concept developed kind of like by Henry Kissinger and it turned him into a, a well, it was developed before Henry Kissinger, but he kind of came along and, and grappled it and force fed it to Nixon. <laughs> you have my voice. <laughs> Uh, and he and Nixon like utilized this liberal economic order. So what they did was after World War II, they didn't want any more world war. So they decided we're going to create a liberal economic order across the world and prevent World War III. And the way they did that was by installing U.S.-led military bases all over the place. So now they have, uh, I don't know how many military bases there are, U.S. military bases there are right now, but I think there's over 100. There's a lot. And so you could argue that the liberal economic order succeeded in, in doing its job because we didn't experience World War III. But now in the age of the Internet, we don't need it anymore. My opinion, of course, is that this this idea of limited war. So what they did was the liberal economic order put military bases all over the world and established Henry Kissinger's idea of limited warfare. So instead of total war which is what seemed to have been happening before that. You know, a gun, a guy gets assassinated, a country goes to war with another country, then the other country goes to war with them. That's how World War I started, and it just called World War. So Henry was like, yeah, let's do limited warfare instead. So if the Russians, for instance, invade Korea, rather than drop a nuclear bomb on Moscow and fight, carpet bomb Sevastopol, we'll go into Korea. Or we'll, we'll, we'll send arms to the Koreans to, to fight a limited war. And you stay away from your total war. And, and for, for real, Vietnam was a limited war in the sense that it wasn't like, you know, it was a communist. It was like a Russian-American conflict in the guise of like dudes fighting in the jungle, being funded by the Chinese. The, you know, the North Koreans were being funded by the Chinese and the Russians, the communist empire more or less at the time. And uh, the South Vietnamese and the were being funded by the uh, Americans and the French and the English and all that to the demo, the, uh, the capitalists at the time. So it worked. It worked, Henry. Thanks, Hank. Limited war. Yay. But now in 2019, we don't need it anymore. And now it's causing more tension than if we didn't have it, I think, but I don't know what to do with all the military bases. <sighs> you know, it's, it's, uh, like drones can be hacked. So if we start, if we rely too heavily on drone bombers, they, they'll just get hacked and flown over our own cities. So we can't keep doing that. Uh, yes. Anyway, that's where the word liberal comes from and why it's so hated right now. Even if people don't realize why they hate that word so much, that's where it comes from and why I think a big part of why it's, it's become such um, a rash on society. So back to my original point, which is left and the left and the right. Have you heard this fucking cart this fairy tale the left i'm on the left well i'm on the right let's draw a line in the middle we each stand on either that's not how people work we're all in it together on earth and if you want to measure politics and political spectrum it's not a line it's like a bunch of it's a bunch of directions it's a sphere of energy like directional uh, you can be anywhere in this sphere and the sphere is turning and moving and you can be in multiple places at once so 
there's this like tribalism thing in humanity where people really they find comfort in being on a team because you don't have to do it all yourself. And if you have a really strong teammate, they'll take care of it for you or they'll take care of a lot of your trouble for you. And in a lot of ways, it's a it's part of what we are genetically. You were tribal. Fam the family unit, for instance, the, the human family unit is a very tribal thing. And you, you know, we're 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 useless for the first four years of our life. Completely useless almost. I mean, we we just lay around and learn. We're super vulnerable. Um and we rely solely on others. The only way that is that is what we are bred to understand. Without others, you will die instantly. Um, can't even move. Human babies are like ah, gravity just gotcha. So there's this reliance on the other. I'm down with it. I like it. I love people, and you have to be willing to love and rely on other people because if you try and do it all on your own, you're fucked. You may be able to go into the woods, but the only way you're going to survive is if you hunt with maybe with uh, tools that someone else built. I guess technically you could forge your own tools. You could build your own gun. You could make your own hoe and rake. Um, where did And maybe you could go out into the woods and melt your own iron, smelt your own iron and shave your own wood and then craft your own hook rakes. But that's not how it goes. Even people that live off grid go into the fucking Home Depot and load up on what they need and then go off grid because you rely on other people. We need each other to survive. That being said, when it comes to politics and ideas, it doesn't have to be like that. It doesn't have to be a team game and there doesn't have to be a winner. In fact, the more that we try and win over other people with our ideas, the less winning there's going to be for all of us. So that's what we've been looking at for the last two years. It's bizarre, it's frightening, it's disgusting that Anyone would think that we're somehow not on the same page or, or working together to survive. Have you seen the three giant hurricanes that struck, uh, what was it, last year, the year before? Three! Normally there's one. Normally. It's getting to the point where it seems normal when there's one big hurricane a year. You know, I was when I was growing up in the 80s and 90s, you'd get a hurricane every three years, two years. Something ho- It would be horrible. Big, big world news. I think it was last year. Was the last year? Three fucking hurricanes. Giant hurricanes. One of them, it was, it was multiple years ago. It just upended Puerto Rico, and we're still, like, facing it. The the rain, the flooding in the, the middle of America that's just doused the farmers and ruined a huge segment of the, the United States cropland. The, the dying of the Great Barrier Reef due to acidity and the warming of the ocean temperature this shit is not political and there is no side there's no left or right to it you might think see this is where i'm at now is no forget about the left and the right look at look at acting liberally and conservatively yes you need to be a conservationist and and use less plastic but you also need to be liberal and think of new ways to break down the plastic, be open to change. Like with mushrooms or something like that, you know, what is it? Pestiolopsis microspora, I believe is one of the mushrooms that breaks down plastic and consumes it. So there, that's a very liberal, uh, a technology that's never been invented before and a very conservative willing to sacrifice my own. Look at this fucking plastic. I get like, grave like like when i when i throw away plastic these days sometimes i get like this feeling of like the cold dead hands of the grave reaching up and grabbing me do you guys get that do you get that ever it's it's fucked up so it's really important right now that we thrust aside our differences in that spectrum in that realm of politics it's because the only way it's the only way we're going to be able to survive, man. And maybe it's not the only way. It's not the only way. But it's one really easy way. There's fun ways to do it, like play games together. You can still get that tribalism by playing like a, a video game with somebody, especially like team video games. Those, I love games like that. Like, But then I was playing a lot of Heroes of the Storm, which is a MOBA, a massive online battle arena game where it's like five on five. And I would get angry at my teammates if they weren't good. So in that sense, I stopped playing it. 
I haven't played it in like a year or something because of that, because I would, I would play and I would have fun. And then if someone wasn't like an expert or I thought they weren't good enough or whatever, I'd, I'd get angry at them and then I'd be pissed off at people. I'd get off and I'd feel angry. So I cut that out of my life, but there's what other uh, good, good ways like team building exercises are there. I mean, a healthy debate is always nice as long as you're open to ideas and you're not trying to prove a point, you know, thrust a threshold but you just want to hear other people's ideas and tell them yours and come to like congruences. That's fascinating. That's super healthy. Actually. Music is another thing I was thinking like playing in a band with someone playing in a band with a bunch of other people is a great way to learn about how other people think and feel and move. I mean, you could intimately get to know someone if you play music with them. And if you intimately know someone and you play music with them, you'll find it's very easy to play music together because you you'll go to changes together. Like you, you see the world kind of in like, similar patterns and especially like if you know when you're with that person that this is one of our patterns then you apply music to it and it's like oh here we go we're about to change and you sing your note and they play their chord that you didn't know they were going to play but they sound so fucking good together that can happen politically too at least technologically and and, and functionally just a matter of getting people up getting people motivated and grinding it out that didn't peak my audio. I'm going to have to tweak that for the next time. See you later. I love you.